what I'm about to show you may very well set the new bar for this channel. This is the result of courage, determination, and perseverance. The courage to blow up a $4,000 engine. The determination to come up with a plan to do so, and the perseverance to follow through with those plans. Because this could be the worst core I've had on the channel. It may not be, but it is going to be a contender. This is a 3.3 liter Kia Lambda V6. It's out of a 2016 Kia Sorento. It also came in the Cadenza and the Sedona. It's a 290 horsepower direct injected 3.3 liter. Came out in 2014. I think they ran these through 2020 or 21. These are really expensive. And, and there's a good reason why. There's a lot more demand than supply. I didn't mean to rhyme. I won't do that next time. Dang it. Why might I think this engine is going to be that bad? Well, this is the good side. So for let's point out what's going on here. For one, there's a crack in the oil pan right here. There's also a ventilation or inspection port right here. The block is cracked at the oil pan seam. There's also a protrusion here, or should I call it a contusion from a connecting rod. All right, I'm, I'm done with the dad jokes, I promise. Another hole here, another out dent here, one more here, and this is the good side. And now it's pretty clear why the other side was the good side. So of course you've got your standard massive Conrod hole right here. And then you have an auxiliary hole right here. And this one's interesting because there's actually dents going this direction, like someone swinging a hammer. But what I think could have potentially happened is maybe, and this is just a theory, this chucked a rod with part of a wrist pin or a complete one ready to reinstall. And it was pulling the rod and the rod and wrist pin were slamming into the block because the dents in here are circular, kind of like what a wrist pin would do. And we all know that you can't break a wrist pin unless, of course, it's a Dodge engine. There were some other signs, like, I don't know, the rings hanging out of the bottom of the pan. Nope, those don't go there. Last week, during the Jaguar teardown, the chuck failed in my impact driver. It's a very sad moment for me. That was my favorite impact driver, but a lot of you thought I was going to throw it away. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to fix it. But until I get around to doing that, yeah. Sometimes I buy new tools. My hammer still works just fine. I suppose we should start like usual. Pull the spark plugs. Oh, well, that one will come out okay. All six seem to come out pretty easy. Let's take a look at what they look like. As I suspected, we have some mechanically regapped spark plugs. Two. This one's much worse. The other plugs just look old. That one's got a bunch of deposits on it. Malice in the Combustion Palace. The next logical course of action is to see if it turns over. Clearly, I need to know this. Ooh, it's crunchy. Oh, it's ejecting stuff. Let's see. Yep, that's supposed to be on the inside. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's compression that I'm fighting. Nope, that's, that's the end of the line. But hey, we can turn it over. This is what came flying out of the pan when I turned it over. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the oil filter, if it's even there. Sometimes these cores are pretty well stripped. Oh, I'm sure it's there. Oh. Oh. Well, let's see, how much metal did it catch? Quite a bit, actually. It is remove what likely will be the only sellable part off of this engine. The high pressure fuel pump. Yeah, 
Looks okay. Next, we'll start on the front valve cover. Are there are more bolts that I have to take out. Do I have to take these out? No. Pretty sure no. Well, we took them out anyway. Nope, these don't need to come out either. Or maybe they do. We'll find out real quick. Oh, I see how that works. The very first thing I noticed, chunks of engine. Now, of course, you want to find engine parts inside of an engine. That's, that's given, but not this here. So you know it's bad when parts of the bottom of the engine end up at the top. The rest of this looks just average, I would say. It's not horrific, but it is a kind of a late model engine. And you would think it'd be a little cleaner than this if it had regular oil changes. Moving on to the rear. It's gotta be a little, little rough with it, that's all. This side appeared to fare much better. I don't see any signs of metal in the timing cover or any of the crevasses in the cylinder head. This side just looks normal. I think I'm gonna pull the lower oil pan next. I really don't wanna fish all of these parts out of this engine, and I think this will be the easiest way. I think that's all of them. Let's see how hard this is to get this off. Yes, I know, I could, I could ruin it by doing this. It's fine. Oh, I missed a bolt. Right there. Sneaky, you know, not really sneaky. I definitely made the right call. All of this stuff would have ended up somewhere crammed into part of that engine that would have had to fish it out. So we've got, well, that's part of a piston. There's a ring. Oh, there's a, there's a rod bolt. Still good. I don't see a wrist pin in here or parts of it. There's a circlip, lots of little bitty piston nuggets. That is, looks like part of a rod. It's really hard to tell. I'm gonna just, man, I don't wanna pour this oil out. I'm gonna pour the oil out without losing any of this valuable material, and then we'll pop this onto the top of the table and see what happens. So here's what we've got. We've got a ring. We have one semi-complete rod bolt, and then the head of two others. That is part of a rod. There's a piston circlip. There's part of an oil squirter. You don't need those. Then there's some oil ring. And the rest of this, I mean, there might be some smaller fragments. The rest of this looks like engine gravel. Oh, oh look at that. That is a telling sign. That looks like it could be the bushing that goes around the uh, wrist pin, maybe? Maybe part of a rod bearing? Hard to tell when it looks like that. But this, this is not everything. This engine lost a lot of this in this explosion. Now it's time we strip this front cover down and eventually pull it. Let's get the water pump pulley off. Oh, we're leaking. I thought you were empty. Oh, I'm glad I put that pan there. It's stuck on this dowel right here. It's just... This is pesky. There 
There we go. Oh, I don't know if I can show that. It's a little pointy. Water pump looks like it's in pretty good shape. No rust, no corrosion. Man, if somebody needed a backup or something. Man, this sucker's strong. Yeah, we should get the crank pulley off next. Ooh, that almost went in the pan. Now I have to deal with this dipstick. Man, it's been a while. Can I do this? Oh, someone's been in here. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Thank you for whoever helped me there. I'm pretty sure I got all the bolts out. Oh, huh. It's part of a rod. That's where that goes. Inside the timing cover, lots and lots of metal. And not the metal timing cover I'm, I'm talking about from other parts of the engine. There's a large piece of rod and then some smaller pieces here. This is, uh, this is bad. Aside from the metal, the rest of this looks pretty good. I don't see the tensioners overextended or anything. I don't think it was any kind of timing failure. Let's peel all the timing stuff off. We'll start with the tensioners. This. Whoa, that, I did not expect that, but it's fine. I'm sure this one will do the exact same thing. Yeah, it's not so bad when you expect it. I had my safety ghouls on. Let's see. That rail is actually kind of uh Nope, it's good. Yeah, it's fine. Same with that. Yep, these are all in really good shape. Nothing notable. Let's see if we can get these chains off. There's one. Oh, the oil pump chain is next. That's interesting. I don't know if I can get that off that easily. Let's just kind of fish this. Come on now. Oh, oh, stuff's happening. I don't really know what I expected here. Let's just kind of tuck that over there, get this cover off and try some stuff. Oh, that one was full of engine parts. Now, a lot of you guys say that I pull these off the wrong way. Oh no, it's puking. Let's just uh, set that right yonder and then hope it doesn't fall over. So I don't think this is really gonna work. Oh, that, that's dangerous. What if we just... Yeah. That worked out perfect. Look at that. An extra couple chains here for the collection. Before we can crack the cam caps loose, we need to remove this high pressure fuel pump housing and the variable valve timing solenoid. There's the lifter or the roller for that. Now we can crap these cam caps loose. Oh, 
Well, these buckets have a pretty unusual finish. Why is it discolored like that? Is that heat? The journals don't look too bad. The buckets, I, I haven't seen that before. It looks like there's uh, significant metal right there and there. Huh. And the cams really don't look too bad. The journals aren't all scored up like there's a bunch of stuff in the oil. There's some marks, but it's, it's really not bad. And the caps, same thing. They really don't look bad. Now let's get these head bolts out. Frustration. All right, here comes one. Whoa! Will you shut up, cylinder head? Well, the head gasket's good. Ah. Uh, Nothing there. It's got one adjustable too. Wow. Haven't seen that before. So usually there are pistons here or rods or a wrist pin, something. And there's, there's nothing here. I mean, there is one here, but um, I'm pretty sure that's broken too. Now the cylinder head is pretty interesting. This is the front of the engine here, and you can see there's some metal jammed into the combustion chamber. It's not terrible. However, when you get to the middle cylinder, you can see that the sides of the combustion chamber are, are deformed a lot. I think that's the most combustion chamber damage in this manner that we've seen on both sides. And for comparison, here's one that's slightly less damaged, also destroyed. I am surprised at the lack of valve damage here. Obviously, I'm sure some of these valves are bent, but they're not all pointed in wrong directions or broken off. That is just impressive. It's just the whole thing's gone in two cylinders. That's amazing. It is kind of interesting that there's water sitting on top of this piston, and that's not coolant. That's that's water. Now, it could be rainwater. It could. But it could also be other things. Moving on to the other side. I'm going to take a minute and remove a couple brackets real quick. Let's get these uh, cam caps cracked loose. Very similar story on this side. No large metal deposits, still some odd coloring on those buckets. The journals look nice. This side, the cam has a little bit more wear, but it's still not something I would be concerned about. It's not like I can feel any of these grooves with my fingernail. They're in pretty decent shape. Same with the caps. A little bit more, but not not bad. Before we get the main head bolts, we've got one perimeter bolt here. Okay. Hmm. There's one on each side that wasn't nearly as tight as the rest. Let's 
see if this just lifts right off. Well, it may not appear to be as bad as the other side, but I still don't think it's good. Adjustable, <laughs> adjustable. Well, and before I even test this one, let's, let's get a closer look. That one was adjustable, that one's adjustable, and this one is, there we go. I'm pretty sure I know the answer here, but you know, Yep, they're all adjustable. And all three of these have signs of water or moisture in them. And this one, there's some dings and dents from making contact with valves. Not surprised there. And this one's actually been kind of cleaned around on the crown. Wonder if that was a water ingestion thing. I didn't see any issues with the head gasket. Ooh, when you look real close, a little bit of, a little bit of crack there. I mean, there's a crack in the piston is what I'm trying to say. And the other cylinder head, it looks better, but I'm positive there's, there's definitely impact marks on the valves from making contact with the piston. That valve is slightly damaged. And then again, this is the, the carbon has been cleaned off. I wonder why. Okay, now it's time to turn it over. I got my pan underneath it. Nothing bad could possibly happen. Nothing bad. Well, let's just uh, pour some coolant out. Oh no, stuff is, there's a lot of, a lot of lucidities inside. It sounds, I don't want to lose any, oh there's a whole bunch of stuff at the top. I got to clean that up first. That was probably a previous owner those look like intake bolts. I don't want those ending up in my pans. I'll clean this up real quick. I've just decided to remove my pan. It may still make a mess. We'll just have to use a little bit of pig mat to clean it up. But I don't want a bunch of metal in the pan. This is going to rain all kinds of stuff. Oh my gosh. It's just coolant, not a big deal. I think somehow, oh no, this, this is, uh, I picked the wrong direction. Let me get this oil filter housing out of the way. Good, wow. All I gotta say is wow. I am impressed. Let's start with the good. The pickup doesn't have a bunch of junk in it. It just has a, a little bit. The rest of the engine, however, well, you can see that there are multiple impact marks here on this uh, windage tray. That's, that's not supposed to look like that. And then you can see that the Oh, just look at this. I mean, it actually broke out this whole section of pan. And you can see there, it looks like there is a part of a piston jam between the crankshaft and the windage tray. I don't know how this thing turned over at all. And then, of course, you got your, your ring. It's got to go somewhere. Nope, that's just going to, it's just going to stay. Oh, oh, I messed it up. There's one out explosion. There's another, and then, ooh, there's something hiding back here. Oops, no idea what that was. Let's, uh, let's peel the oil pump off, and then we'll get this upper pan off, and then we'll really see what this engine's about. Now for the fun part. Wow. That bolt is bent. I'm going to put that aside so I can show that to you in a minute. Oh, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't even know what this was. <laughs> I don't even know where this came from. There's, there's parts everywhere. Hey, there's a nice rod bearing. It's not too terrible. I wouldn't reuse it. Wow. I, I don't even know what to say here. This is so much worse than I expected. Wow. The real question is, did wrist pins survive this ordeal? Will we even see them? Or are they laying on the street somewhere or are they in a pond? First, let's look at the bottom of the upper oil pan. Huge section missing. It actually cracked the pan all the way through right here. That was, uh, it was very loud when this happened, I promise. I'm not sure if you can tell, but when I pulled the upper oil pan off, one of the bolts was bent. It's this one. And here's, I don't even know if you can call this a windage tray anymore. It's, uh, this is probably the worst looking one we've ever had. There's multiple holes. No, no part of this is in good shape. N none of it. So let's get this unbolted. But first, what is, what is this? Where does that go? Anybody clue me in on that? It's a banjo bolt. Looks maybe oil pressure related. Oh, that's that I know what that is. Here's a sir clip. Of course, standard piston nugget. Oh, let's get this apart. Oh, we gotta save this for the rebuild. Well, that bolt's bent. I can't get on that one or that one. Can't get on that one or that one. Well, I mean, I got most of them out. Let's um, see if we can clearance this a little bit. Or we can just pry it off. There we go. This one just needs a slight little that's it. Nope. Well, I don't have all the bolts out, but that doesn't mean it's not going to come off. It might mean it's not going to come off. Nope. Let's get blue over here. I think we're okay now. Oh wait, there's one more over here. Dang it. That is not, I am not, I do not have access to that. So we're just going to flip this around. Ah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um. I don't even have words for this. There's a healthy nugget. There's a second. Oh, there's a compression ring. There's the bottom part of a rod. Is this, it's all wedged in there. Oh my gosh. It's so much worse. The more you look, the worse it gets. And that, that's the proper way, right? More piston nuggets. So much. There's no sauce, though. Again, this, the sauce to nugget ratio is incorrect. Now, this is, this is just a murder scene in here. I... <laughs> it's so bad. I just have to show you. You can just ooh and ah. I, it, it, it's impressive.
This might be the worst one. I'm not sure. The more you look, the worse it gets. I don't even know how you do this much damage before it stops running. Here's all the pieces we pulled out. Just amazing. I don't know how well this comes across on camera, but there are so many impact marks on this windage tray. It's, I can't count them all. There's imprints of threads. This is amazing. We're just going to kind of metal fatigue this way out of here. There we go. Easy removal. Now I'm going to do the right thing and try to turn the crank over. Wow, it does turn over, not well, and I appear, it appears to have come to a halt. Oh, I see what's happening. Oh, don't worry about that, that's nothing. All right, we're just, I don't even know where to begin with this. I think I need to take this bolt out because there still is one rod and piston that's kind of connected right here. I don't even know how that's going to come out. There is one rod hanging on by literally one bolt and that is this one here. I don't know that this is going to work because this bolt is bent at a 30 degree angle. Oh, it just broke I think. Yeah, just sheared it off. That was probably for the best. We can kind of push that. No, that's, that's not getting out of the way. Oh, maybe it, okay. We're gonna pull all the main caps. We're gonna get this crankshaft out of here. I'm gonna get this rear main seal plate off first. And it's just gonna have to come out with the crank. Now I have a feeling it's gonna be a little difficult to deal with some of these damaged headed bolts, but it'll be fine, just fine. Well, that one is kind of stuck in there. We'll tap. It's coming out, whether it wants to or not. I have a loader, and I'm not afraid to use it. I might have to use it. What is plan B, you may ask? Leverage. Plan B is almost always leverage. Now, I wouldn't do this on an engine that I planned on fixing. So this is kind of what I meant by perseverance. It's rubble. It's engine rubble. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing I can get these out. The bearings don't look that good. Let's go look at that crankshaft. So we're going to try to get these off. They don't spin. It's fine. When I say these, I mean that one and that one. Lots of damage to this crank. An incredible amount of damage to this crankshaft. But what makes me think it might have been a bearing problem is look at the dark discoloration there. You think that's a spun bearing? But we really, we did see a lot of shrapnel, but it wasn't necessarily bearing material. And the other thing is a lot of the bearings that are coming out are still in one piece. They're, I mean, obviously they're damaged, but they're not like worn to foil. Let's see if we can get these caps off, pry this apart, and see what those bearings look like. 
Full disclaimer, this might not work. if this is going to come apart or not. Well, there's the top of a rod. That is still very, that is like incredibly solid. Maybe that was just it sucking up its own. I don't know. That bearing is pretty much trashed. Still got one more. This one's further from the oil pump. Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to get that apart. I don't think this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyway. Stranger things have happened, I guess. Oh my, that is amazing. That bolt has maybe 50% of the amount of contact patch for the socket. I don't think this one's gonna work either, but you know, the other one did. That was, oh wow. Bolt is bent. And bearing's not too bad. I expected much worse. We are going to gently remove the rods and pistons sections. I don't know what to call this. When I say gently, I mean it's going to take a lot of force because everything's so screwed up. Now this one. Now these, I have no idea how much work this is going to be to get these out. Oh, it's so sharp. Oh man, that is amazing. I'll have to show you that in a minute. Oh, we're dropping nuggets. That sounds wrong. And one left. Hmm. Believe it or not, this is the best rod and piston out of the engine. It's in fantastic condition. I mean, it's, it's, it's mostly complete. And that was the one, as you can see, did some damage to the uh, fractured surface. I had to break the rod bolt to get it off. But, but then that's when things really get crazy. Because this is what's left. This is, I have no idea what goes where or how. There's no way to know. All I know is what is left is really really, really bad. In fact, that one has got a crack right there. It's amazing. That, that rod is, it's, it, it does not rotate. I mean, look at the, look at the damage right there. And then this, this one, This is just, it's just amazing to me. Is that hairline crack we saw when we pulled this apart? Clearly, this endured a lot. I, I'm just, I'm blown away here. And I've seen a lot of blown up motors, but man. Excuse me, engines. Forgive me. That is amazing, but there, there's still more. There, believe it or not, there is more.
So here's the main bearings. I don't really think it's worth looking at the other shells, the lower shells. They're really not that bad. The, the holes in the block, those are that bad, but that's not even what we're here for. We're here for, let me zoom in, that. That is part of a rod jammed through the bore into the block. It is, uh, it's not coming out. That is forever part of this block until it gets smelted down. I just, uh, the force it takes to do that. We've seen that on one 6.2 liter that I tore down probably a year and a half ago. Not quite that embedded though. And this is just, I mean, it's just peppered with impacts. What do you think, guys? Is this the worst one yet? Oh, wait. We still have an oil pump to pull apart. Oh, it's a vein style. And that's never going back together. It's really not too bad in here. There's been a few things run through here, but oh, you know what? We're not going to fight that spring today. I don't know where safety toad is, and that would be really irresponsible. The wear isn't too bad. It's, there's really nothing to show here. It just all fell apart anyway. <laughs> I don't. I don't know where to begin. This was some good old-fashioned H2O. It was a hydrolock event. We saw rust in a couple cylinders. There was water sitting on top of the survive surviving piston and it doesn't matter how hard you try and this person tried as hard as they possibly could you cannot compress water because this is always the result always sometimes not quite this severe i just i just have a few questions how long did this take to come apart because there are so many impact marks and that short block was turned into crankcase rubble the second question i have is where are the wrist pins outer space maybe they're gone they are long gone and more importantly is this the worst core we've had on the channel is this the most blown up engine that we've seen i mean we've seen some pretty bad ones and there's different ways to judge how bad an engine is you know you can go with the sheer volume of destruction the heads being trashed the rods and pistons being trashed or you can go with a percentage how much of the engine survived and in this case the high pressure fuel pump the high pressure fuel pump. Yeah, that's it. Everything else, I mean, okay, I might sell some cams. I don't know what the value of these parts are, but the heads are trashed, everything in the short block's trashed, oil pan, the timing cover's beat up. It's all junk. So is this the worst one? I want to know. Let me know what you think. And I don't know if I can top this. I mean, maybe. I can't predict the future, but this was a lot of fun to tear down. I had a, an, I, I enjoyed every second of this. I love the fact-finding mission of how bad this could actually get, and well, we saw it. It was pretty bad. If you'd like to buy anything out of this engine for your desk, because I wouldn't use, unless you need the high-pressure fuel pump, anything, or if you want to buy anything off of something I've torn down in the past, or off of this flooded 335 IS, not that much survived, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com. You can peruse our inventory. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.